Dirty Dealings, Corporate Battles, Consumer Wars. This is Evening 5. Kazanakh National and CGC Digital, a fintech subsidiary of Credit Guarantee Corporation Malaysia, have jointly invested in funding societies, which provides financing to micro, small and medium enterprises in Southeast Asia. This confirms a report by The Edge in November 2023 that Kazanakh was looking to invest in the platform. In a statement today, Kazanakh said the investment aims to address the 90 billion ringgit funding gap for such enterprises in Malaysia and the region. It falls under the Sovereign Wealth Fund's Dana Impact Mandate, which supports investments that create long-term societal value for Malaysians. The fresh funds will enable funding societies to expand its Malaysian coverage to areas beyond Kuala Lumpur, Selangor, Penang and Johor and also grow the share of annual loan disbursements from Sharia compliance financing to more than 50% by next year. Since its inception, the lending platform has disbursed over 3.5 billion US dollars or 16 billion ringgit in business financing through 5 million transactions to the benefit of over 100,000 businesses across its five markets in Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Thailand and Vietnam. The government has decided to keep registration for Padu open despite the system's troubling launch yesterday. Communications Minister Fahmi Fatsil said following a cabinet meeting today, Putrajaya's executive branch found that the digital database for 32 million Malaysians is running smoothly despite reports to the contrary. Fahmi told the press that the issues raised have been successfully resolved in a very short period of time and the monitoring of security aspects continues. He noted the issue of suspending the system was not raised. Yesterday, former DAP lawmaker Dr Ong Kian Ming had called for the cabinet to suspend registrations on Padu until the security issues are resolved. In a post on X, he showed that he was able to override the access to Padu accounts of his party colleagues with just their IC numbers and postcodes. Fahmi said today that this was fixed last night. M Investment Bank maintained its end 2024 target for the FBM KLCI at 1,545 points, higher than its 2023 close of 1,454.66 points amid expectations of higher corporate earnings growth, enticing dividend yields, a strong outlook for the Malaysian ringgit and renewed expectations for infrastructure expansion supported by a firm government mandate. However, the research house noted that the outlook of the local market will be tempered by the rising probability of a global recession from the aftermath of an extended 500 basis point US interest rate hike cycle, which will drive volatility across all markets. M Investments projected the FBM KLCI's corporate earnings in 2024 to grow by 14.4 per cent, driven largely by oil and gas, plantation, power and financial services, comparable to Bloomberg consensus earnings growth of 13.6 per cent. In comparison with other Southeast Asian countries, Vietnam is expected to lead the pack with an impressive corporate earnings growth of 52%, followed by Indonesia 35%, Thailand 18% and the Philippines 16%. As for the ringgit, it kept its year-end target of 45 against the US dollar, as the greenback's weakness is expected to resurface once US economic indicators soften further, paving the way for a backloaded rate cut. National car maker Proton achieved its fifth straight year of sales growth in 2023, with total sales, both domestic and export, amounting to 154,611 vehicles, a 9.3% increase over the 141,432 units sold in 2022. This is its strongest sales performance since 2012. Based on the projected total industry volume of 794,948, units for 2023, Proton estimated its market share to be 19.4%. 
With December sales reaching 12,711 units, the company said it also finished the year ranked second in overall sales, which was the fifth year in a row it maintained that position. Its CEO, Dr. Lee Chun-Rong, said the automotive industry set another record in 2023, when overall sales rose by 10.3% above the previous volume high reached just a year before. For Proton, while demand remains strong for its X-Series SUVs, it was the rebound in demand for the Persona, Iris, Exora and Saga models that powered sales growth. Volume growth was a remarkable 25.6% for the year, consisting mainly of first-time car buyers. Kajaya Prospect Group has bagged a contract worth 170.94 million ringgit from Prasada Mentari, an indirect subsidiary of Eastern and Oriental for the development of a 45-storey building on Andaman Island, Penang. The construction outfit's subsidiary, Kajaya Prospect Malaysia, accepted the letter of award today. According to its stock exchange disclosure, the project entails the construction and execution of main building works for a 45-storey structure, including a 38-storey serviced apartment block comprising 380 units, a two-storey basement car park and a five-storey elevated car park. The completion deadline is 35 months from January 18, 2024. The group said the contract is expected to contribute positively to its earnings and net assets per share for the financial years ending 2024 to 2026. Kajaya Prospect CEO D. Eng Tiong said that with this new award, the group's outstanding order book remains ample at 4.5 billion ringgit, ensuring long-term earnings visibility in the years to come. At the close, shares in Kerjaya Prospect traded 3.95% higher at 1 ringgit 58 sen for a market value of 2 billion ringgit.